Let's take a look at the square planar molecular geometry. So starting out, we look at square planar. That means that we have a steric number of six, six things attached to that central atom, and two of them are going to be lone pairs. So here's one, two lone pairs, and then one, two, three, four atoms. So six things attached to the central atom, two of them lone pairs, that's square planar. A good example of that is XEF4. You can see we have one, two lone pairs, and then one, two, three, four of the atoms bonded to the central atom here, the central xenon atom. And that's a square planar molecular geometry. Let's look at this in three dimensions. Let's consider the purple the central XE atom, and then we'll add four fluorine atoms. One, two, three, four. They spread out to be as far away from each other as they can. But don't forget about those two lone pairs. They occupy space and they'll push these fluorine atoms down. So let's add them in. One lone pair, you can see it's pushing everything down. And then when we add the other lone pair, let's get this straight here. That actually goes on the bottom, pushes them back up. And that's why we have this square planar molecular geometry. So you can see the square here, the 90 degree bond angles, but it's all in one plane. And on either side, we have our lone pairs of electrons. Let's go back. We can also use the AXE notation when we're looking at square planar. We'll have the central atom, that's the A, the atoms that are bonded to it, that's X, and then the lone pair, we put E. So we have A, and then we have one, two, three, four for the X, and then E, we have two of those, AX, four, E, two, and if you look this up, it's gonna be square planar. This is Dr. B looking at the square planar molecular shape or geometry. Thanks for watching.